and was a carpenter fifty years. He pounded out blood and sweat and tears. One day he laid his hammer up. He wanted to do the things he loved. What once was Sunday fishing, now was seven days a week. He told his wife to find me, I'll be down at the creek. Cause I don't want to drive another nail. Well, I've worked hard to do my job, and I've done it well. I've got the scars in these two hands to prove where I haven't failed. I don't want to drive another nail. She was a woman full of faith and old Sam was full of pride. But she knew he had one more job to do before he died. Sunday rolled around in the country church for the lost and found. Old Sam was there against his will as the preacher spoke on Calvary's hill. Oh, how they took the master and they nailed him to a tree. Hear old Sam a crying as he dropped down on his knees. Oh Lord, I don't want to drive another nail. I want to give my life for you. I want to do it well. You've got the scars in your two hands that prove where I have failed. Lord, I don't want to drive. Nail. Lord, I don't want to drive another nail. I want to give my life for you. I want to do it well. You've got the scars in your two hands that show where I have failed. Lord, I don't want to drive another nail. You've got the scars in your two hands that prove where I have failed. Lord, I don't want to drive another nail. No, I don't want to drive another nail. All right. Happy Resurrection Day, everybody. God bless you. It is so good to be here with you this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whatever part of the world you're in. And I say that because I'm so grateful to tell you that we have people from literally all over the world that tune into this broadcast. I start out with a handful of people on Sunday mornings a lot of times, but it gets it gets forwarded and reforwarded. And I'm so thankful because as the week goes on, I get some really nice comments from different ones of you and uh, that are thankful for what, you know, for by taking a few minutes to do this. And in reality, it, it really isn't about me. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus Christ. And today, we're celebrating that we have a risen Savior. You know, uh, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his, his only begotten Son, his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life and that precious savior that we have he gave his life on calvary's cross and on the third day he rose from the dead and he's alive he's alive forevermore and he gave himself as a willing sacrifice on that cross and then he's rose from the dead and he's and he sits at the right hand of god making intercession for you and for me now, that is absolutely a mind blower. That is absolutely marvelous. That's what we're celebrating today. And, you know, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you don't have a whole lot to celebrate, do you? So I just want to encourage you today that if you haven't accepted Christ, that you repent. That means that you really say, dear God, I am so sorry for what I've done. I, I know I've, I've been a sinner. I know I've messed up royally. Forgive me. Come into my life, my heart and life, make me a brand new man, woman, boy or girl, whatever the case may be. 
And if you're really sincere and you really are willing to start a new life, to be what the Bible says, born again, he will come and, and he will save you, deliver you, save you to the uttermost. Anyway, let me just read a little scripture this morning because we are celebrating a risen Savior. Here in John chapter 20, Bible says, beginning at verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. They've lost the Lord? Oh my, so, you know, we, we don't know where we put him. <laughs> so anyway, so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb and both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. However, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They hadn't realized that. They were about to learn. They were learning that all that Jesus had told them, all that he taught them, was coming true. It was coming true. And so they were going to understand a risen Savior in a whole new life. And they were going to understand more and more what the real gospel of Jesus Christ meant and what it meant to them and what it would mean for to the rest of the world for all eternity to have a risen Savior. Hey, good morning, you guys. Good to see Sean and Crystal, Sonia. And I'm doing a, a, a dual broadcast today, so uh, I uh, had the privilege of doing that, and I'm just so thankful that different ones of you have asked me to keep it going. <laughs> and so I started this one at uh, when the pandemic hit, and uh, I've just been doing a little bit every Sunday morning. Not meant to be a, a you know a, a three point sermon or anything like that. It's just honestly meant to to love you, to uplift you, and to encourage you, and hopefully to challenge you. You know, where are you in your walk with the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Are you having some struggles that you need some help with? Do you need prayer? If, if so, let us know, you know. Anyway, then the disciples went back to their home, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they, and they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Who is it, Mary? Who are you looking for? Tell me about it. Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, please tell, please tell me where you've put him, and I'll go get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned him, she turned to him and cried out in Aramaic Rabboni, which means teacher. Oh, my word, it's you, basically, you know. And Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have yet uh, not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he'd said these things to her. And uh, so, that, hey, she thought they lost him, you know. <laughs> wow, you definitely don't want to lose the Lord, that's for sure. And I don't want you to lose the Lord in your heart and life either, you know. And uh, so, again, I just want to encourage you, you know, let him be uh, Lord of lords and King of kings in your heart and life. Now, you may have walked to the Lord, some of you that are watching me, for many years. And I just want to encourage you, keep it fresh. Keep it alive. Stay into the Word. Pray. Fellowship with the saints. Do all the things that you know that are the right things to do so that you will keep your soul refreshed so that th every day will be new. Every day is a new, it's a new creation. You know, Paul said, I die daily. You know, in other words, he, uh, Paul took a look and, and he did a little assessment 
of him himself and of his own spiritual life. And so he would basically, you know, that's basically we're saying, Lord, if there's anything between you and me, reveal it to me, reveal it to me so that I can be clean and decent before any attitudes, any actions that just aren't proper. Lord, just, you know, remind me, remind me by the Holy Spirit and, and so that I can gladly stay in line with your word and your will. Father, we just thank you so much that we've got a lot to celebrate today, Lord. We serve a risen Savior, and we're so thankful for that. We're so thankful that he's alive and so that we can live and we can have eternal life forever and ever and ever. And I just pray that if there's anybody watching this Resurrection Day short devotional here, that anybody that's watching that hasn't accepted you, Lord, lay it on their hearts. Help them to find the way. Help the lost to be saved. Help those in darkness to see the light. And we just praise you, Lord. We bless you again in Jesus' precious name. We thank you for loving us so much that you gave your very best on Calvary's cross and that we have a risen Savior who sits at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for each of us. I need that. We all need that. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Hey, you guys, prayer request, Pastor Don N.M., that stands for New Mexico, P-A-S-T-O-R-D-O-N-N-M, Pastor Don N-M, at gmail.com. Put a uh, prayer in the subject line and send me a prayer request. We'll gladly pray over you. I don't want your money. I just want your prayer request. <laughs> yeah. Just want to love you. Lay a little loving on you. Pray for you. Encourage you. That's what we're up to here. Just to uplift and to encourage and to challenge. I hope you'll share this with other people today. Please pass this on. And uh, as you know, as you uh, as you do, you know, some other people hopefully will be blessed too. Go with God and he will go with you. No question about it. So anyway, hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Day. God bless. And we will talk to you soon. Hopefully next Sunday morning, if not sooner. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.